Chapter 1. Surveying the Scene Shock, sadness and shouts for justice were just some of the responses reverberating around the globe as we started to write this book. It was just a few months after the death of George Floyd, May 2020, which had catalyzed protests against police brutality and racial inequality in the US, the UK and many other countries. The disproportionate impact of COVID-19 on black, Asian and minority ethnic communities in the UK had also put issues of race on the front page of newspapers and at the centre of public debates. Our hearts were heavy as we were swept up in different ways in all that was going on around us. The increased attention to racism prompted many minority ethnic individuals to speak up about their own experiences. I, Jason, was one of them speaking out publicly for the first time about my experiences of racism perpetrated by police and people in the pew, both in the past and in the present. Within a short period of time, racism became a more prominent social concern in the public eye. Thousands demonstrated in support of the Black Lives Matter BLM movement. Schools, businesses, government departments and churches publicly affirmed their support for racial equality, and pledged further change. Articles, books, podcasts and special events directed our attention to the problem of racism and urged us to take action. But the surge in attention to racism then triggered a backlash in the form of attacks on critical race theory. Accusations were made that anti-racism work is part of a dangerous, woke culture. How are we as Christians to make sense of these debates? How are we to respond? The aim of this book is not to solve all the issues in the debate about racism. It is to offer fellow Christians some tools and frameworks to help all of us more thoughtfully navigate conversations about race and to better love our brothers and sisters of all ethnicities. For some who read this book, the conversation about race sparked by George Floyd's death has faded to a dim and distant memory. For others, the conversation is live and personal. Some of us may be hurting because of the racism that we have personally experienced. Others may be hurting because of racism that we have witnessed or that has affected those we care about. All of us can feel at a loss as to how to feel or act in the midst of the pain and injustice in our society. When a paramedic arrives at the scene of an emergency... They are trained to ask the right questions and to bring the right equipment so they can begin to put things right. They may not have all the answers, but their toolkit and training make a critical difference. We pray that this book might help us as Christians, when confronted by racism, to be more like a paramedic than a passerby, to take wise action rather than simply keep our heads down and walk by. Our stories. We believe that the church is called to be a place where people of all cultures, languages, skin tones, and histories can participate, grow, and serve together. We've both been conscious of the ways that race and culture shape our experience of the church for a long time. I, Jason, am Black British. I was born in London to parents from the island of Barbados in the Caribbean who had moved to the UK to work and study. The suburb where I grew up was predominantly white. This meant that, apart from my parents, I encountered very few people with brown skin who were in skilled professions such as medicine, engineering, teaching or banking. It wasn't until we started to visit Barbados that I became aware of how much this had affected my own thinking. I remember wondering how the plane I was on would actually be able to land on the island. Who would have built the runway? Subconsciously, my environment had caused me to doubt whether, apart from some exceptions like my parents, black people had the competence to do these things. It seems almost unbelievable now that, despite the colour of my own skin, I might think this way. But it meant that my parents' decision to make Barbados a kind of second home for us was all the more precious. Those subconscious stereotypes quickly evaporated when we were immersed in a different place. 
I was also very aware of being seen as an outsider on both sides of the Atlantic. My accent made me a novelty in the Caribbean, while my skin and hair made me a curiosity among my classmates in England. My wife is white, and we are on an ongoing journey of working out what it looks like to raise children with mixed heritage in a sometimes hostile world. We've also had the privilege of planting an intentionally multi-ethnic church on an urban housing estate. Over the last decade, we have learnt lots about seeking to minister in a multi-ethnic, multicultural, multi-generational environment, often from our mistakes. I, Jessamine, am a white American. I was born in Tokyo and spent my childhood between Japan, California and Massachusetts. I had the chance to meet people from many parts of the world and transition between different cultures. Early on, I realized that church is both enriched and complicated by ethnic diversity. As a kid, I loved singing in Japanese, hearing the faith-filled testimonies of our Nigerian friends, and eating Korean and Filipino food at the monthly bring and share lunch. But I also picked up on the fact that there are sometimes conflicts around leadership styles and tensions about how best to manage multiple languages in the service. I observed that a black friend of ours called Dame experienced overt racism. I, on the other hand, would get special attention for having blue eyes and red hair. As an adult, I worked in India for a few years, where the caste system intersects with skin color and class in ways that profoundly impact how people live and worship. These experiences led me to pursue a PhD in sociology, focusing on religion, race, and inequality. Two years into my PhD, the 2016 American presidential campaign exposed deep and ugly racial divisions in the American church, and most acutely in the evangelical church. I started doing research, both in the US and the UK, into how evangelicals think about race and what helps or hinders churches from becoming racially integrated. My personal desire is for the church to be a community of welcome and justice, a place of healing and wholeness that points to the reconciling power of Jesus. Both of us acknowledge that we see these topics of racial justice and unity through particular lenses. Our own identities and experiences have been profoundly shaped by our families, friends, skin tones, educational opportunities, work contexts, cultural environments, and church communities. We do not claim to have a comprehensive understanding of the complex issues that this book raises. Certainly, we both have much more to learn. However, we have endeavoured to write with integrity about some of the things we've learnt so far with the hope that it can be of help to others who also long for the church to reflect God's heart for unity and diversity.